thanks for joining us. And uh, yes, as Rebecca said, my name is Fraser Wilson. I'm the, um, the program team leader for land based engineering at SRUC Oak Ridge campus. And I'm just going to spend a little bit of time this uh, this afternoon, this evening, um, looking at the different careers that are on offer in the land based engineering um, sector. So land based engineering, what is it? What do we cover? Well, land based engineering is basically all the different types of machinery that we might find in, uh, used on the land to produce and maintain, uh, produce crops and, and maintain the uh, maintain the land. So we've got everything from tractors, combines to domestic hedge cutters from robotic lawnmowers to robotic feeders that we might see used in, in dairy farms and, and robotic lawnmowers used in professional golf courses and professional turf care. We have machinery from sorry from forage harvesters and for silage and the likes through to forges for forming and shaping metals and servicing the the equine industry as well so we go from large machinery such as tractors down to small handheld appliances uh, like chainsaws as, as as well so a wide array of um, a wide array of machines and equipment to cover all these different um, sectors. Moving on to the sectors that fall within land based engineering, there are, are, are several if you like. So the the main ones fall under sort of five different categories. So we've got agriculture, anything looking at farm machinery, as I say, from some of the larger uh, combines down to the, 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 the smaller feeding, feeder wagons and what have you, if you on, on smaller farms. So huge variety of equipment and machinery used in the agricultural sector. Uh, we also cover the uh, horticulture and uh, production horticulture and domestic horticulture, so gardenings, domestic gardens, machinery that would be used within these areas and going into the, the more professional horticultural side as, as well. Within land based engineering, we would look at fixed plant and equipment. So if you're considering a career looking after dairy equipment, then the, we would be the, 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 the area that you would come to as well. So any of the robotics and uh, equipment that's used for milking cows on a, on a daily basis, we uh, would be the, the area we would cover um, this as well. Along the same lines of uh, horticulture and, um, and, and sort of home based uh, grass machinery, we also have the professional turf care and outdoor power equipment area as, as well. So this covers anything from go karts up to lawnmowers that are used on um, on golf courses for maintaining maintaining the turf, snow blowers, if you like, and outdoor power equipment, strimmers, that sort of thing, and chainsaws. Um, also within the land based sector falls the, the commercial area of arboriculture and forestry, um, a, a real niche area, but a growing sector within the, the land based area uh, at this current time. So these are the different sectors that we might uh, that fall within um, land based engineering. But I guess the question is what jobs do the um, do they support? Well, there's a, a huge um, variation and in, in jobs that people can enter the sector through. So the the main areas tend to be a, a service engineer and a, a service technician. A service engineer would be a candidate who was looking to service and maintain the equipment that would be used in the, the sectors that we, we just looked like it looked at. And then we have a service technician who would be the next level up, who'd be looking at the uh, the diagnostics and repair of the the, the machinery that are deployed in these these sectors. So that's very much looking at a workshop based um, workshop based 
profession and, and, and looking at, you know, working on with tools and equipment to, to maintain and repair the, the specialist equipment in the sector. But that's not the only entry point, if you like. It's not the only career you could choose to follow. Um, many candidates come through the courses and, and go on to be product specialists for perhaps a, a machinery manufacturer, perhaps John Deere, perhaps New Holland, perhaps Toro in the, in the turf equipment, where they would specialise in this manufacturer's uh, area of expertise and the area of specialism when it comes to th their machines. Another area could be that, you know, you'd be out demonstrating the use of these machines to potential customers and get them involved in machinery sales. Huge amount of um, jobs advertised and available in these these areas uh, as, as well. If there's repairs going on for machinery, then there, there obviously has to be a supply of parts. And again, this is another career path that many could uh, follow where they would be situated within a, a dealership or with a manufacturer and be a specialist in the, um, the sourcing and um, uh, pushing out parts to either workshops or to customers. A more advanced career could be um, somebody who specialised in sp specialist product troubleshooting, where they were basically just going out and diagnosing specialist machinery for faults and helping out uh, the service engineers and service technicians within the, the, the dealerships. These uh, roles tend to be with the actual manufacturer themselves rather than the, the dealerships that would be based around the country. But again, an, an excellent career with lots of progression up or opportunities. It doesn't just stop with the manufacturers and the, the dealerships or the, the opportunities to um, form a career in, in different areas such as a, a farm mechanic or a golf course mechanic where rather than being in a dealership that you're actually with the end users and you're you're looking after machinery at the, the point where it's, it's being used. Uh, again, many um, candidates followed this, this route and perhaps have a dual role as a, a, a greenkeeper and a mechanic or a, or a a farmer and a mechanic at the, the, the same the same time. Uh, another role that's um, become particularly popular over the last uh, sort of three or four years is for candidates who have went down the the engineering um, pathway have then went into operating the machinery, uh, whether it's self-employed or as a, a, a contractor the ability to service and maintain the equipment and then operate it as well gives them a, a, a real edge in a competitive market. We have a number of candidates who come into our sector and, and then perhaps progress into uh, different areas such as which is, is maybe not so much within the, the land based, um, the, the five sectors we looked at. For instance, we've had candidates who have been with us and uh, went through apprenticeships and then went on to be welder fabricators in, in different sort of uh, sectors, whether it be shipbuilding out in the, the offshore oil industry or onshore uh, energy production such as servicing and maintaining wind turbines. Um, we've also had candidates who have went on to work in uh, energy generation stations such as um, power plants to and looking at instrumentation um, and, and monitoring and maintaining the instrumentation within these 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 areas. And of course uh, uh, you know the last option could be to progress and become a trainer or or educator in this 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 area as as well. So with these job roles, where are we likely to see these job roles actually taking, taking place? Again, there's a bit of variation depending on the path, path you take. Um, many candidates may work in a business where they're, they're, they're in the workshop or in the, the parts department within their dealership and, and don't venture further than that. Others may be out on site and um, repairing machinery for, where it's been used to, on farms, on uh, bottom image down there shows a, a forestry machine being repaired on site at uh, where, where they're cutting the, the, the timber. So again, a wide variety of um, 
areas where these skills can can be used to um, to make sure that every day is, is slightly different. You could one day be in the workshop, second day, and you know out on out on site. So it keeps a bit of variety within the within the within the job. Um, we have had some candidates who go through the, the engineering pathway and then specialise in sort of um, more advanced technologies such as GPS and setting up equipment and, and tractors for uh, gaining efficiency when they're out applying pesticides and, and, and what have you. Again, wide variety of sort of opportunities to, to move into in, in that area. With all these careers, the careers are supported by by study and um, at SRUC we offer a number of pathways to enter the um, enter these these different sectors. The most popular at this point in time would be the modern apprenticeship program. There are two modern apprenticeship programs on offer. The level five, which gives the, the service engineering modern apprenticeship and then the technician uh, engineer, which would be the, the, the SEQF level six. The entry point would be the modern apprenticeship level five and after successful completion, the option to progress onto the SEQF level six um, would, be, would be there for candidates who wish to take that path. Another pathway that is available is through a manufactured sponsored diploma, whether this be with a, a Clash UK, a, a Case New Holland or, or the Agco Group, uh, perhaps Kubota, these, these options are available for a, for a sponsored um, pathway as well. If an apprenticeship isn't available or um, the candidates would prefer a more full time uh, program over a over a year. Uh, SRUC do offer full time courses in land based engineering, uh, an introductory level at SEQF level four, where candidates who uh, perhaps haven't gained the the qualification school from from school that they, they may have hoped for, or um, you know just perhaps haven't been engaged at school greatly. Then the SEQF level four introduction program gives them a good base to to go in and learn the skills and um, understand standing of the sector to then progress perhaps on the, the modern apprenticeship program or onto our national certificate in land based engineering which is uh, an SEQF level six. These courses are on offer at both our Barony and Oak Ridge campuses. Now all being well and the technology working correctly I'm hoping to show a little video of one of our candidates in the sector uh, who won an award uh, just last year over the whole of the UK and why he thinks it's a, a, a good industry to, to work in. I'm Paul Thompson, I'm 21 and I live in Angus. I work for Agricar as an agricultural engineer. I left school when I was 15. When I was still at school, didn't really know what I wanted to do, but uh, knew I liked mechanicking and also had an interest in farming found the apprenticeship and applied for it and never really looked back since. I did four years at college, a year uh, at the depot beforehand, so I'm now a time serve mechanic. Learned a lot at college and a lot at the depot. Um, you go from learning about engines to gearboxes, electrics, everything's different. Doing the modern apprenticeship would definitely have helped my career. Um, there's stuff that you learn in it that you would never probably see or know um, if you didn't do it. When a new tractor goes out, we do a pre-delivery inspection uh, or a PDI, basically checking everything on the tractor that we possibly can, means there's no breakdowns. Uh, technology is definitely a really big part of it. It's um, becoming, well, it's in every single machine now um, and getting more and more and more laptops and sensors and electronic um, control parts. The combines are a lot of money. They're few hundred thousand but the training that you get on them makes it very understandable. The knowledge that you get given is quite a lot to back it up so you feel comfortable going out and working on them. I enjoy it a lot. It's, uh, it's good going. Not many jobs that you can go to and there's something different every single day. Uh, skills to do the job, be problem solving, be the big one. Um, working together as a team, that would also be 
another big one. The uh, difference the job made is farmers wouldn't be going if the tractors were broken down. So shortage in food or it'd have an impact on the food industry. Uh, I really enjoy my job just for the fact of you never know what you're coming to. Uh, when you go out to a machine and it's broken down and you're able to fix it and it's back up running, it makes you feel really, really good. Uh, it feels like you've helped somebody out as well. Uh, if one of my friends was thinking about coming into this industry, I'd tell them to go for it because if more people knew what this industry um, let you achieve and let you experience, then it'd be well worth it. Okie dokie, so I think that uh, rounds, rounds um, my presentation up, Rebecca. So if, there was, if anybody did have any questions, I'm more than happy to, um, I'm more than happy to uh, answer them if I can. Thanks very much, Reid. I think that was really interesting to see all the different kind of roles within land-based engineering um, and some of the career pathways into them. Just opened up questioning just now, so if anybody's got any questions, feel free to post them. We'll leave that open for a wee minute. So Fraser, just obviously for yourselves working at SRUC, so what does your role look like on a day-to-day -day basis working within that sector? Um, so for, for me, uh, it's um, we on a daily basis, we, we have contact with our students. We uh, do 100% face-to-face -face delivery, so we, we don't have any online learning. We have the candidates into campus and, and our at we attempt to get them into the workshops on a daily basis, get them hands-on, um, fixing machines, and get them understand the machines, doing the, the, the learning and teaching in a hands-on environment as, as, as much as we can. So uh, if I give an example of today, this morning I was teaching um, for your students about um, uh, power shift transmission systems that would be used in the tractors that we just seen from that the Paul was was working on and then this afternoon we were looking at air conditioning systems that we would have in uh, all sorts of mach machinery and uh, so, so, sort of mobile vehicles so cars buses that sort of thing so uh, yeah a, a good um, variety tomorrow I am going in to do a session on uh, rebuilding Diesel engines, so yeah, uh, a, bit, a bit of a, a bit of a, a bit of a variety during during the week for us, which uh, uh, is is quite good and, and uh, keeps it interesting for for me and the and the students.